We're live and we're live everybody welcome in it is oh my god yeah. wednesday 204 p.m central i have the lovely alexandra mertz with me today at tesla boomer mama on x we haven't made noise in a while we we That's started true. a podcast called the noisemakers and mm -hmm. uh we haven't made noise since then <laughs> it's been a minute but uh, because we yeah. got we got made noise right everybody made noise yes. at us <laughs> we were yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's, I'm very excited to have her back on. Um, somebody that I, I really respect and trust in the space of of, of Tesla and many other topics as well. And I know my audience loves you as well. And it's it's good to. I've been meaning to get back into the podcast stuff a little. I've been I took a little bit of break from the podcast okay. stuff uh, just to keep fresh. And uh, I I'm so happy that you're with me today to restart okay. this. So thank you so much How for joining me. How did your break go? How did your break go? Did you miss it? It was that? great. Mm -hmm. Of course, I always miss you guys. I think I think for me with with the content stuff, it's uh, the biggest lesson I'm I'm learning is if if I don't switch it up, I burn out, mm -hmm. and because it's for the way I'm the way I'm I'm wired, you know, and it's and I love experimenting. So it's for me, it's like just experimenting mm -hmm. with stuff. But uh, but it's this podcast stuff. I mean, speaking with you is perfect. So it gets me right Thank in the groove. Have. So I really appreciate you for coming. And so what's uh, what's a front of mind with Tesla? Because I will start there. I think that's, the, you know, I know you go on Herbert's channel basically every week and, and uh, you guys cover that space very closely. Um, where, where, where's your head at with, with some of the latest stuff that's broke? with the story you know it's actually funny because i think of the whole crowd that's on herbert's channel i'm the one who doesn't look so much to short-term stuff right so i'm i'm sometimes really b bothered not bothered is not the right word but i feel uncomfortable because i feel i have not not much to say on these weekly movements be it the stock be it you know the last uh, outrage on 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 twitter or whatever because my mind is made up i mean i i really had a coming to Jesus moment in December 2022, when the stock was so low, telling myself, look, now you're getting into territory where you start losing money. Do you really want to stay in this stock? And had half a night thinking about it. And that was it. And then, and then I was through it. And I said, this is the stock I want to be in. This is the product I love. This is the company I love. This is the you know, the future I, I, I want uh, for me, for my children, for everybody here on this planet. And, uh, and then suddenly all this noise went away. So it's for the last 14, 15 months, it's been easy for me. It really was because every time there was the next, I mean, the stock went up, that's probably helping as well. But when it went back down, every time there's a next outrage, I'm like, yeah, just look at it. it I mean, they're all executing. The, the, the cars are building up FSD miles. The energy sector has huge reserves. I mean, if you, if you know how to read balance sheet and, and the financials, you see how much energy is going to come. Um, I love the bots. I love everything about it. So once you're back to the fundamentals, it, it doesn't matter to me what happens anymore on a day-to-day -day basis. I mean, it's the stock at 200, 250. Of course, I'd prefer it be, it be at 400. Everybody would be in a good mood. But, you know, all this, should we advertise? Should we this? Should we that? Come on. We've got the best engineers coming from MIT, coming from Cal Poly, coming from all over the world to work at Tesla. And you think us little X accounts are... Um, better equipped to tell them what to do. I, I just, I just don't believe that. So, so uh, I've, I've been defending, defending, defending. So what's my, my best because I, I'm better in offensive than in defense, but uh, <laughs> there you go. So, so do you think that all the short term stock price movements and stuff is, uh, is impacting maybe folks ability to see the force from the trees in a way? Well, there are two things. There are two things. First of all, um, people, like to arbitrage. So if they see Nvidia going up as it did, or if they see some other stock where they feel they're missing out because they stay in Tesla, they have this FOMO of missing out, right? This fear of 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 having, you know, if only I would have sold this, I would have made more money on that. Uh, I, I, it's a bit greedy. I'm I'm not like that. For me, it's less about the money. I mean, of course, I want money at the end of it, but it's not about short term money. I don't need this money for the next ten years. So the, the this f fear of missing out, I don't have it. I actually would have it if I wouldn't be in, in Tesla. But uh, but I think that's one, and so so that builds up this aggression of oh my god, why is he not advertising? If he would advertise, my stock would go up as well, like the others are doing on the other side of the the garden, right? It just it it. It makes me a bit sad because it's sort of people that are not in Tesla for the conviction, but they are in it for the stock. But that's what comes with it when you're one of the mega packs. There are people in there that are not, um, you know, just mission driven. And they, they even 
make fun of people that are mission driven because they are just in either technical analysis or short term right trading, or they have even overextended by margins or by 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 options, and then they get burned. I mean, I know a couple of people that uh, really got burned in 2022, lost millions. And and when that happens to you, instead of blaming yourself, well, you blame Elon or you blame Max or you blame Alexandra, or you blame, I don't know who else you can blame, but there you go. Yeah. How, how do you think about the sort of criticism that comes from, from some folks that's like, well, you just have, you know, I just have a blind faith on Elon and Tesla just doing something instead of looking at the numbers, like actually sitting down and analyzing and looking at the at their profits going down, their 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 margins going down, the net income going down. How how do you still have so much conviction and and how how do you have so much conviction and how is it any different than having blind faith? How how do you go through that thought process? So I, I think I'm I mean nobody can really blame me for not thinking. Um, I'm, and I'm putting all my research out there and for free. So it's not as if anybody yeah. has to subscribe to anything, they all get it. I'm doing every quarter the financial strength. That's what I really know how to do because that's where I come from, from the rating world. Tesla is as strong as ever by itself, but also relative to the rest of the industry. Tesla has better financial strength than Apple, right? So, I mean, when yesterday when people were starting to go, oh, maybe Apple is stopping because they're buying Tesla. I was like, you got to be kidding. Can you define <laughs> how, how are they stronger than Apple from a financial perspective? Well, because they don't have debt. They have hardly any debt. And, and I think what Elon is trying to do, which is hardly anybody, he's always going for the hard way, right? He, he can never take it easy. I mean, I got to give that to the guy. Um, so... But that gives us stockholders, obviously, a lot of comfort. When you see, for example, Polestar now, who has to do another offering and, and get a billion in because otherwise they're, they're toast, um, I don't think that will happen with Tesla. I actually wish they would do a capital raise rather than ever, ever going into loans or whatever, because I do believe you know there it's a good moment to, to, to raise money again and go quicker into the future projects. But that's not what it's all about. Today, the 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 capital structure of Tesla is as strong as can be. Compare it to equity, compare it to uh, EBITDA, compare it to anything you want. I mean, you see my tables. It is with Google, the only company worldwide that has this strength, right? And I do that every quarter. I, I go into all those earnings. I go through it all. So talk about homework. The, the other thing is, um, when you make products, and I mean, you've worked for them, you will have phases where you launch products, you sell a lot, you have to, um, you know, manage the, the, the commercial distribution of it. You need to be sure that, you know, sales work and, and everything. And then comes always a moment when it when it flattens out a little bit. And we, I think we're in that period. It's very difficult to time. And, and I don't have no, no pretension to know better. Yeah, that's exactly it. I have no pretension to know better than, than any of, of the Tesla people have. But I think what they try to do, and 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 I you know, if 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 I'm right with this theory, it's actually a, a genius, is by lowering prices, because that's actually the only component that changed, right? It is the fact that the prices became more affordable of the cars. And interest rates were certainly a big contributor to it, but it's also the fact that if you want to make sure EV adoption doesn't stand still because you're actually fighting the world, right? Everybody's against it. You're the one who wants to make it happen. You have to have these cars reliable and affordable. Reliable, we are there, but affordable is still a stretch. So by making them affordable, well, you're giving up margin. There's just, you know, there's no other way to do it. You can't. And I mean, we're the only ones who have margin on EVs. Nobody else has margins on EVs. So he was able, <clears throat> by, by starting doing that in, in January 2023, he was able to kick the whole rest of the EV industry up, telling them you have to get even better because we're going to be competitive. We're not just sitting there with our 20% margins. We're going to go down and, and you will have to become better given you have no margin yet. It's, it's even steeper. And you see what happened to Lucid and Rivian. Um, 
and BYD, by the way, as well. I'm really waiting for those BYD results. Uh, it's all good that they're throwing out so many cars, but actually they threw out cars at enormous reductions and I'm really looking for those financials. Because they were, BYD, just as a little parenthesis, because people never talk about it, is a company that's making a good steady margin on batteries, not huge, but a good steady margin, um, and never had uh, car margins extrapolated. Then they did that in Q3 and it looked fabulous. They only did it for one little window. And then came Q4, where suddenly they really pushed the cars out and you saw all these price reductions. And now I'm really waiting for those Q4 financials. And I hope they're doing the, the split again so that we see both, because it's not going to be as fabulous as, as Q3 looked like. But that's another story. So um, so going back to, to Tesla, the only thing that needed to change was affordability. But it had obviously the trigger effect that you see it in profitability. I mean, that's just the way it is. Less in, less out. That's uh, that's the way it goes. Now, as a Tesla investor, you have to ask yourself from January onwards, this is now 14 months ago, whether you can live with that. I mean, you just took into the stomach that, that Elon sold four or five times Tesla stock to finance X. You just woke up from that again, thought, oh, let's please get up from $100. And then he comes with the, the, the price cuts. So if you survived that moment, if you if you had the stomach to stick out there, I think it's actually getting easier now because now you understand what it's all for. So model three, a refresh, beautiful. Model Y, still best sold car. Model X, the love of my life. Um, model S, wonderful. We're going to have a roadster. We have the Cybertruck. I think it's rolling. Could it have been quicker? Of course. Would I love the ne next generation car quicker? Of course. The sooner it's here, the better it is. But I'd rather have a perfect product. I mean, why did Apple give up? Because hardware is the toughest job of the, in the world, right? Manufacturers, nothing. Apple doesn't manufacture. I mean, I, I know everybody tells me, yeah, they do a little bit. No, they don't. They, they subcontract everything. So if you are in a position where you're vertically integrated and where you're manufacturing and where you're doing the hard job, well, that there will be bubble times when it's a little bit less inflated, when it's a little bit uh, less. Going. So what they tried to do, in my view, was have the Cybertruck, have, have maybe even the Roadster to decorate this flattening curve, growth curve, before the next generation and, and the unboxing models are, are up and have energy hit in. But obviously we all know the energy issue is that you don't get the financial straight away. You have to, you know, install them in, in multiple installments. So you have them. Yes, we see them as reserves already in the balance sheet, but we don't see it on profitability yet. So every quarter it will be very interesting now how much more of energy will filter in to smoothen out the, the financials. And then this, there's the bot. So if you have a two or three year horizon, and can just stomach what's happening at the moment, which may be still a bit dry and, and rough, there's no issue. If you don't like it, well, you should have gotten out last year, January, because there were enough signals to it. And that's why I said, that's when I had my coming to Jesus moment. And once I was over it, I, I had no problem with it anymore. Yeah, that, that's that's super insightful stuff. If, if I think about sort of how how I'm thinking about it, it's and maybe, maybe it's having the luxury of being in the name since 2012, is that I've, I've seen this before. I've seen this before. So like from from 2014 to 2019, it was just this thing. It was just a sideways thing in within the context of 40 percent short interest, a bungled Model X ramp, a bungled Model 3 ramp, uh, Elon taking Tesla private at 420, smoking a joint on Joe Rogan, calling somebody a pedophile. OK, like I this is like. And then so, so when we <laughs> and then uh, quarterly earnings calls where he's, uh, you know, uh, telling the uh, analysts to be quiet and bringing Gally on to talk about, you know, his questions and whatever. So it's like for me, it's it's just it's par for the course, you know, it's totally 2018. That was glorious. Yeah, exactly. So it's like if I think back to the story, mm. most of Tesla's history yeah. is ugly, is ugly. You know, it's it's Tesla being a, a happy, positive story in the eyes of the public to me seems like a more recent phenomenon. <laughs> it's a 2020, 21, 2022 kind of thing, you know, and so from viewing it from that lens, I think helps me put a lot of it in context. And I think there is also the added thing where I don't think it gets talked about enough and I actually made a video about this last week um, where with Elon being more talkative on X and being much more willing to, let's say, 
lead from the front from a free speech issue on a platform that he purchased because of free speech, which is, if you look at his leadership style, aligns perfectly with leading from the front. You know what I'm saying? The Now, that same audience that has been exposed to his incredibly um, ambitious goal of moving the world to sustainable energy, all of a sudden, that group is being disrupted by a message that's a 180 of where that group traditionally is from that perspective. And so you have that dynamic on top of it, which is fueling a lot of the discussion on X as well. But in the end, if that was the majority, if that was the masses, I feel like, and I, I, you're blurry. Can you still hear me? I just want to make sure you can still hear me because you're like blurring out a little bit. I'm not sure if I'm lagging for you. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Are you there? Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Yeah, I am. Okay, you're still okay, there. Okay, I heard okay. you. It was it was hashing out. But but you're completely right. I wouldn't have called it ugly. Uh, I would have called it um, I don't know diversified. I mean, there's there's no dull day in Tesla land. But sure. but you're right. You remember all these the series we did about a year ago on ESG and before that. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. he's disrupting this whole elite um, establishment. He, he's just, he's giving them the middle finger. I mean, he told them. Um, so the, I'm loving that side of it. I love this Same. rebellious <laughs> side of it. I, I, honestly, I appreciate, I, but I do believe yeah. that somebody who wants to be in a smooth stock that was at 400 and should go to 800, to 800 just in a straight line, for them it's tough, right? It, it's just, yeah. but, but, the only recipe I can give these people is think about the mission. If, if you can align with the mission and if you see what they're doing and if go back to Investor Day, I don't know, I think I watched Investor Day 15 times, if not 20. Uh, if, if you can align with what they're doing there, if you, if you see this team and understand how good these people are, these are the best of the best. Yeah. I mean, Rebecca Tinichi in charging, look what she's doing. Nobody got that charging network up. We got it at the best price everywhere yeah. right who did that nobody else and and it, this is not the end of charging charging will have many more chapters but it, it any little thing you take they're going for the best and yeah. is it without hurdles no of course it's not and I'm, I'm sure there are employees who would sometimes wish elon would shut up because it's their job it's you know there, there's so much to it but i don't know about that yeah. i think the employees like it I like it. All of them. You think yeah. so? Yeah, because, Good. you know, if I think back to my time, it's like, because this was a topic of discussion, maybe a very small percentage of them are like, ah, like, why are you saying that? But like a huge majority, I think, are there because they they're wired a certain way. They want to fight, mm. you know, they want to fight. They, they want to find something to fight against. Yeah, you know? and, and the enemy becomes yeah. clearer. You <laughs> see, the enemy becomes clearer. I mean, what he's doing at the moment with Google and what he did last week with, with Microsoft is genius. You know, by him shaming them, this is it. It's on the table now. I loved it this morning because Joe Gabia, you know, who is on the board, the, the former co-founder of, of Airbnb, mm -hmm. is yeah, on yeah, the board yeah. of Tesla. Yeah, yeah. He jumped yeah. on the subject and, and, and was outspoken about it. Obviously, we had Bill Ackman, who was uh, very outspoken on some other topics. I love it. These guys are coming out of their homes, you know, and, and th this is it. And it's all happening right here on X. It's not yeah. happening in the Wall Street Journal. It's not happening in the New York Times. It's happening right here on X. And I think that how it's impacting the zeitgeist, so how it's impacting social oh, discourse. Oh, so good, so good. Oh. Zeitgeist, you see that? Yeah, I am. Got it. I, I know words. <laughs> <laughs> I would have gotten, you. thank you. Um, but but how, how that now has entered the zeitgeist, I think it's super, um, super underappreciated. So like, for example, if, if I think about all the podcasts that I typically listen to, uh, which um, some of them are a little bit more niche, but like the Joe Rogan experience, the all-in podcast, a little bit more niche, but it's more like super finance driven. Elon, X, Tesla, th these they, X, every single podcast 
these products come up and these people yes. come up like yes. and I don't think people understand that. And if I use my my channel as a as an example. So one of the things we've been able to do is take uh, and basically all the spaces that Elon has done on X, we've we've made them so that they're actually which watchable and listenable. <laughs> right. We saw that as a hey, this is like these are great conversations. Nobody's even getting exposed to them after they, you know, they go dormant. So then we're like, OK, so let's make them actually so that people can listen. And the, and the brand new audience that has that has brought to this channel is insane. And and the commentary is incredibly positive around it. And it's like the people that traditionally would have never paid attention to the story are saying things like, I'm so glad there's somebody out there fighting for this. I'm so glad out there that's sticking up for, you know, this stuff. I'm so glad that Elon's leading the charge from this. And I think that is that entire picture is being missed. And who and who are and you know, my hypothesis is, and I don't know if these are connected. But when you think about the companies, Tesla specifically, next leg of growth, it's everyone else. It's yeah. the people. It's not like you, me, and the few crazy of us that are obsessing about the story on a, on a daily basis. It is the population. And the population at large, listen to Joe Rogan, listen to other podcasts, you know, like mm. political podcasts, listen to societal yeah. podcasts, listen to watch entertainment where the cyber truck's going to be on every freaking rap music video. OK, like this is what this is where this is going. And, and, and it's I'm just surprised by the lack of foresight when it comes to people that are so negative on how it impacts their emotions or feelings because of what the individual is saying. I'm truly surprised well, by that. Yeah, well, because, and that because shouldn't happen. Other, yeah. I agree with you, but the other social media are all pretty, pretty, right? Uh, I've been for years on Facebook other than for my job and lots of immigration stuff is happening on Facebook. Actually, there's one thing, if ever I could get uh, Linda or, or Elon's attention to it, one good feature that exists on Facebook is private groups because yes, here you can do communities, but everything is public, and uh, and the fact you know and you can do DM groups, but it's just it's not the same the same uh, way than than doing groups. So w one thing I had used a lot for my for my professional life were groups on immigration, uh, where I helped a lot and and that brought me a, a lot of clients after that, um, and currently also on because you know I'm doing Zepbound the the shot to to lose weight it's like ozempic but the second generation um okay. and uh, and so the the uh, there are groups of 150,000 people mainly ladies but 150,000 exchanging you know how they're dieting and what they're doing whatever all that is not happening on on x on x it's the brutal honest rebels right we're screaming mm -hmm. at each other i mean i love it but i always feel i'm changing personality when i open facebook become the nice lad, older lady and then and then I'm going back to X and I'm coming my my fighter my fighter uniform on again. Um so so he's missing out on some of the of, of on some of the opportunities that social media has and he's live is 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 leaving those I'm I'm gonna be a bit nasty now but those nice sheep on Instagram and, and Facebook and all that. But to change the world, you don't. You, you shouldn't look, look after the the sheep. You should look after the lions, right? That's that's how it works in the life. And he has brought all the lions to X, and they're roaring and, and they're going. For it. Yeah, that's a fascinating way of looking at it. You know, I, yeah, because because you do have. I mean, you do have a group of people that like to be part of changing the world. Let's say, and then you have a group of people that want to just enjoy the world. They want to enjoy life. You know, they want to be just happy. They don't want to be miserable. Yeah. <laughs> they want to be happy because there there is a certain level of misery in trying to make stuff happen. I mean, you, you know, you, yeah. you, you face it, but you accept it because you're just like, OK, that's I'm willing to because the other side of it just feels that much better. Um, and that's also the difference between entrepreneurs and people that love being employed. I mean, there, there's really a difference yeah. in that. Uh, they're very, very high level employees. But if you ask them, very few of them would ever take the risk to become an entrepreneur. And, you know, I work that that's my niche. My, my niche is, and some, I saw somebody asking whether I'm a lawyer. I'm not a lawyer. I'm a consultant for people who want to immigrate and uh, are entrepreneurial. And we built that entrepreneurial project so it deserves the green card at the end. That's my job. Um, but so I have a lot of people, you know, initially for an initial session, sending me CVs and whatever, and, and I listen to them for an hour. For an hour, but you see so many people that that lack that 
entrepreneurial fire, right? Where you where you're ready to take a risk, where you're ready to not know how much you're gonna earn next year, where you know that maybe your four one k is not gonna go up to a sixty five years, but you're gonna need it earlier if if where it has to be, where uh, you're prepared to pitch for money, where you know so many things that put you in outside of your comfort zone, but there are only so few who can do it. And it's not a matter of education. It's, I, I always wonder, is it genetic or whatever it is? Because the, the lions of this world, the people that really are ready to get up and catch whatever needs to be caught, uh, be it professionally, be it politically, be it to change the world, um, there are only so few. And, and obviously, Elon is, learned, uh, is, is our leader of our lion horde and, and helping us to do it. But... Um, but that's why X is so so important. It it's cruel. It is. I mean, there are days when I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> I should have stayed away, right? And I don't like fighting. But when you get to me, I will fight, right? I mean, there there is mm-hmm. no doubt. And uh, and I mean, and the names. I mean, last week it was ass kicking. I am uh, sorry, ass kissing. <laughs> I am not <laughs> ass kissing Elon. I am not. I am not. I'm. Not. I'm actually. I tell you one thing. When I have a point of what I think he should improve, where well, I make the point once. Mm-hmm. I know he reads our stuff, so if he wants to get to it, he has heard it from me, and that's it. But I don't feel the necessity to do it every single day. And so yeah. these day, these people that are every single day hammering it, advertising, advertising, advertising. Don't do price cuts. Don't do this. Come on, I would have a kid like that. Excuse me, that kid would <laughs> learn how the mom is functioning. No, you can't do that with nobody in the world. Yeah, it, that, that's actually a very interesting commentary. I, I do think it's int- you know, I, and, and and I'm sure the other people on the other side will say, you know, like if I use myself on as, as an example, why you know then why are you constantly you know on on X only like majority huge majority saying positive stuff about tesla or positive stuff about x like that's so crazy like and i'm like well okay maybe but i think maybe it's just the way you know an individual is wired where i by default focus on the good things that can happen whereas other people focus more on the bad things that can happen i'm not saying one's better than the other but i think hammering you know like like it's like hammering one or the other for that is i feel like it's not fair because it's just how the individual is is is, is wired and then having a place where those two ideas can go up, up against each other that's where the value comes from that's where the value comes from exactly. right that, that, at least and, that's the way i view it and, yeah. and, and i don't think neither you nor me are shying away of the discussion right if there no, is a, a legitimate yeah. discussion and and i think oh, yeah. both of us have said yeah if they want to do advertising it's great i, don't I spoke want with to uh, that's it. With Lee from Tesla Economist on Yasha's channel, and I know Lee's yeah. like very like he's uh, he's uh, very uh, upset about the execution of forty six eighty specifically, mm-hmm. and I'm like let's talk about it, and like that's and I feel like that's the healthy way of yeah. of actually <laughs> going through this. But but it's interesting to frame that within the context of X because X is like now one of those like places where it's meant to do that. It's mm-hmm. meant to do that, like fighting and not the the silencing of the dissenting opinion, not about Tesla, but about societal issues that are very emotional and difficult by default. But by putting that artificial uh, lid on it, it prevents the truth to come from coming forward. And, yeah. and for me, it's like if no one has done that before and now this or no one has done that recently and you have an individual doing that, how is that a bad thing? How is that a bad thing, right? And so, like, my my conclusion is, it's only a bad thing because you have money tied to the guy. You're uncomfortable with him doing that thing, mm. right? And so that yeah. I feel like that's the that's the only variable there. I don't, I don't, and I I don't, I can't come to any other conclusion. Unfortunately, I might be wrong, and I feel like if if you didn't have money tied to the guy doing that, then at that point, it's probably you either don't care or you have a passing thought and you move on. Whereas with this is like, you're almost like holding yourself hostage. <laughs> it's like, there's so much potential, I but I really hate what you're saying. And I'm not <laughs> saying, you know, I'm not saying keep it or sell it. And that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is just, it's it's a fascinating dynamic. And this is how Elon disrupted himself, right? It's like, there is a there is a contingency of people that really enjoy his messaging on that product that are now deeply uncomfortable with what he's doing with X because it's yeah. at odds with their worldview. Yeah, and it's, I agree. Yeah. I agree. And when, when I see people saying, oh, I'm a Democrat, I can never buy a Tesla again. What? Why are we yeah. even talking about? I mean, well, right. excuse me, you're voting they have every right for to a do president. It. Oh, of course, yeah. they have every right. But I mean, I, I wonder why then they think we're not doing our homework, because my homework is not thinking of how my politics when I evaluate 
the future of Tesla, right? That, that's that's just two different subjects. But but I, I, again, and I want to say something because I saw a comment on that. Yes, sure. I did change my view actually on buybacks. So two years ago, I was for buybacks. It was at the moment when the stock was sliding down. We were about 220, where, where I thought it was a good level, which slid down from 400 to 220. Um, and uh, and I, I thought, you know, this was a good moment to purchase in terms of capital investment. It was a good price to get in. I mean, good thing they didn't do it because it went down to 100. Um, so at that moment, I saw it because I really felt that finances were stable and everything was just stable and there was the, the money that was left then from there. Since then, we've had eight earnings calls. One earning call after that, I changed my opinion and actually made it very public about it because it became clear that they needed more money for more capital expenditure, meaning, you know, building up the bot, building new factories, doing whatever else they did. And, uh, and at that moment, it, there was just no way that even though there are 28 or $29 billion, there was enough money left for doing all these expansions, driving the company as conservatively as Elon wants to drive it. Again, I'm just saying this, in financial strength, this is the second best company in the world. And that's the way he wants to run it. He doesn't want to take any financial risk. He's hardly taking any loans on and, and hardly any consumer loans. Whenever Tesla sells a car with financing, it's financed by a third party. It's not financed by, by Tesla. They had a couple of loans, They've completely driven that down. So at the moment, their focus is being able to purchase what they need to purchase, be that uh, video chips, be that whatever it is, but certainly not, not, not buying back. And given the magnitude of what AI can bring and will bring, and, and Tesla having the data center to do it, and probably, and I'm still very hopeful on Dojo being the, the, the promised land where, where I hope we're getting to, I don't want any penny back, no dividends, no buybacks, no nothing. And that has been my position for now more than 18 months. That's so that's, that's an interesting, I mean, I, I, I for me, it's like, I don't care if they buy back or not. The, my mm -hmm. position has been, if they buy back, it's a signal that they don't know what to do with the cash. If they don't buy back, it's a signal that they know what to do with the cash. Like, yeah. okay, cool. Yeah. Like, yeah, you know, exactly. I, I think it's indifferent for me. The, the very interesting point you make though, is like that, that thesis of, well, Tesla's next leg or, you know, the company's whatever future is dependent on a technology that mm -hmm. is not only unproven, but many think is not viable because either mm -hmm. reg regulatory or performance or anything like that. And I think what what's and, and I would love to hear your thoughts on this because you tell me if I'm thinking about this incorrectly. If we look at version 12, a lot of the footage that's been released from the software, from from a lot of uh, people that have the software now, um, and with Elon's demo back from last year, it seems like the company has been able in the last year. So they've been developing this version 12 for really about a year with the, sort of that AI brain of ingesting video and sending it to the car on what the actions are. And it's just an AI brain driving the car uh, at that point. They It seems like they figured out how to make that thing drive basically as good as a Waymo car in a year with a fraction of the cost that once it's finished, it gets beamed to millions of cars. How That's is exactly that? It. Like, how are you thinking about that? Like, what, what yeah, what's your thought that, that process? Is it. That, that's exactly it. The, the thing is, Wall Street doesn't see it. I mean, I, I'm actually want, uh, wondering all the time. Yeah, exactly. Why, Why not? It? So is yeah. it because they're just so tired of it? They've seen so many other videos and just think it's never ready. It's never ready. I, I just, you know, for them, the incremental step forward that we see with, with version 12, because we understand where it comes from, right? It's now completely neural netted and, and it's not anymore pre-programmed. It's not, you see a stop sign, now do this. It's, you see something, now do it. And uh, the... I don't think they see it. You know, they're not the brightest at Wall Street. I was there, so I can say so because I was part of it. <laughs> Shout out Wall Street. <laughs> but no, it, but it is because it's, I mean, first of all, they are not just trading one stock. Every fund manager is, is at least 30, 40 stock. Uh, uh, it's committees. It's It's much more bureaucratic and much more large because they need to, in their mind, have a view on on the stock exchange, on interest rates, on blah blah blah, and then 
to one of their stocks is Tesla, right? So, it, you know, we're really getting into the grind and now it's a version 11 and now it's a version 12. So what, right? It, it doesn't give them this aha moment that they had when they had judge GPT and could put a question in there and it, re it responded to them and they were like, wow. I mean, gosh, it's only words. It's only words that had a probability that after word two will come word three and after word three will come word four. I mean, if you know a little bit about math, you know what happened there. You know, it's all weights. The fact that there is now, and, and then they were astonished that you would give a sentence that it would make a short video of three dogs barking at each other. Yes, that is still the same. There's still the same connection of there's a word and there's a picture and now make the pic picture move. What is happening with Tesla is so much different. It's input of video, output of action. It's a completely other cycle, yet they don't get it because they don't use it. They don't understand it when they see the, the, the videos, but it doesn't matter. It, honestly, I'm, I've given up wanting to educate them on that because it just, the moment will come, it will come later, it gives us more time to accumulate and that's just it. You know, I'm, I, at the moment, I'm very happy with the stock price where it is. Uh, it shouldn't be there. It shouldn't be there. The whole AI move that other stock made should have been at least done the same by Tesla. The, the whole NVIDIA move is a, is a hardware move, right? I mean, they'll have some software as well. And you know, they're going into full self-driving as well. But but yeah. the the whole NVIDIA move is is more or less a hardware move. The, the appliance on it, the, the, the applied software is going to be so much more profitable. And Tesla is in the front position. Like Tesla is in the front position for the bot. It's great that we have 15 different companies or probably 100 different companies working on bots. But it, what, what's important is who has a use case and who has the best use case straight away to get these, the, these bots up there. When I listen to Figure being very proud and all congrats to them that BMW is going to have some of those Figure bots, you got to be kidding. BMW currently doesn't really know how to build an EV. Now suddenly they'll have some bots from Figure to do what? A bot from Tesla, once it's there, will straight away be usable because they're working for the use case. They're straight away. Yeah. So if, if you have two companies, one sitting in Munich, one sitting in the Silicon Valley, working together on a bot, I mean, I wish them well, but I just don't see how this can become instantly the same use case that we're, ha that we're having here. So I mean, you won't make me shut up about the positives I see with Tesla. Doesn't mean everything is perfect. I can tell you a couple of things I don't like. I didn't like that Zach left without much explanation. Uh, it gave me sort of a, a, a gut feeling. I mean, I may be completely wrong, but it seems it was this pre-period building up the compensation plan for Elon, the next one. And when you hear in that Delaware judgment, that preparation of the Delaware judgment that's going to come out now soon, um, how the judge went after the then CFO, I understand that any CFO at the moment would just say, you know what, I'm very happy at home sitting in my garden. I'm, I'm done with this. So maybe that's it. Maybe that's a moment where he just thought, this is it. I've had enough stress. Uh, leave this to somebody else. But I liked Zach. I liked Zach in the earnings calls. I found he came over very structured, gave us a perspective that I'm missing at the moment. And the current CFO, mm, not so convinced yet. See, I mean, I'm I'm very happy to to give you the points where I'm not, you know, convinced yet. Where I find they they don't have the best of the best, and and don't bring us the information in the way that could be optimized. So so there is stuff to be improved, like with everything. It's just uh, it's just it. Yeah, I think that the interesting piece of that AI angle is that the if you think of the internet and the dot com bubble back in the 1999 2000. The the promise of the internet was obvious, I think, at that time. I was still a freaking, how old was I? I was 13 in 2000, something like that. Oh my gosh, um, you're 20 yeah, years 13. younger than me. Oh my God. I thought we were the same age. Yeah, I'm shocked. It. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. um, oh my God. But... <laughs> but so what, what what I what I what I think about the the AI thing is that now you have so so Nvidia being where it's at now and their margins being at where they're at now is proof that there is and and, and Chamath was talking about this in the All In podcast last week that the demand for AI is there. Oh, clear, it's clear. clearly, clearly. Oh, and I mean, and, and it's crazy that the amounts they yeah. throw because. Tesla throws about 5 billion currently in capital expenditure. 
on, on that field, right? Others is like 15, 20, 30 right. billion. It's cr- meta. I mean, yeah. meta is throwing the money out of the window. Yeah, they, they've been just crazy, crazy amounts of expense. So they're being super efficient with the spends. But the the hardware, and this is what, what the, the, the point that he was making was so fascinating. They, they are they are winning because of the hardware, because there's not enough supply to meet the demand, right? The H100 chip is basically the underlying technology that allows AI to exist today, right? But the argument he was making, and you talked about this, is that wh- where is that thing that you do with the hardware that's really going to change the world in, in insane ways? And I think there's an argument to be made for things like ChatGPT and LLMs and MidJourney and you know Eleven Labs and all these other AI companies that if you if you hone it the right way, you have the right process, you can multiply your efficiency or you can't multiply your output. There are ways to do it, but it's not intuitive and it's and it's only for a professional person or somebody that's trying to make uh, a business or they're trying to be an entrepreneur, right? Yeah. We haven't had a AI player yet, I would argue, that has been able to take that technology underpinned by that hardware and then bring it to the masses and exactly. completely change what it means to be part of society. Which is, that's what the internet did back in 99, 2000, or even before then, is we went from letters and, you know, uh, your local club for, to talk about your, the same interests and relying on seven channels or whatever it was to watch content and a host of other things. You have to go to the store to buy something. You know, you have to buy your car from the place. You can't, you know, your car isn't connected to this, uh, thing that allows you to talk to it from a different country then the internet came in and then it was like boom everyone's life changed just everyone's life is i wouldn't be able to do this right now without the internet this is just a fact right of course but we haven't seen that with ai yet right exactly it wouldn't exist and that would be the greatest disaster of all if that was true right (laughs) so it was a joke (laughs) but but I'm, i'm being serious but you think about okay so what is Tesla doing? This is where I get really excited about the Tesla story. And like I've, there was a period there where I, I was really, I've always had a high conviction on Tesla, but I was trying to conceptualize why for for the people that follow me, because what, I think it's important for me to be transparent with how I'm thinking about the story, right? So it finally, that conversation, and as I've been thinking about it in the past, finally contextualized for me that I don't know of anybody else that's trying to do what the internet did for the public than what Tesla's doing with artificial intelligence right now. And that is FSD. And that is the bot. And if we look at the last year's development of version 12 with all the videos that we've seen out there, you can see, I think it's it's becoming quite obvious. And I can't wait to try it myself to, to validate that thesis. And I want to make sure that people understand this is a thesis that Tesla has been able to get Waymo level self-driving with one year of development, with an artificial brain, with the least amount of data and the least amount of hardware they'll ever have, with a camera system that costs no more than $1,000 that will be able to be produced in the same exact factories they're doing right now. And it's going to be in a car that starts at $25,000 that's going to be made in the millions of units per year. No one is doing that. Yes, Nobody and after that, that, they're going to put it into a $10,000 bot that's going to do a lot other things rather than just right. driving a ride. I actually yeah. think we should really start calling these AI-enabled cars. I think the wording is important. rather than Transportation FSD, units. Transportation now, AI-enabled. I think okay. it's really important that this AI Fine, at the win. moment comes out. It. <laughs> I always do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> See how yeah. I learned fighting on this X platform? I love it. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I really think we, we have to, you know, people, I mean, obviously we're back to the old subject. Are people educated enough about Tesla? I mean, there were 1.8 million cars sold. So somebody, you know, some of these people got it. But uh, again, um, I think, you know, FSD is probably the right word for, you know, full self-driving, but it's much more than that. It is not full self-driving. It is that AI handles your car handles yeah. everything in your car. And um, and I think that that is important. And then the AI-enabled enabled bot will handle so much of manufacturing, but not only. It, there are so many fields where these bots are going to be useful. And when I hear people scream, oh my God, I don't want to lose my job to a, uh, to a bot. 
Well, first of all, there are at the moment in the United States, 5 million jobs unattended to because nobody wants them. There are so many low level jobs that nobody wants to do from dishwasher to looking after, after elderly people to, I mean, cleaning anything you want to do. So, so there are lots of things that bots can do and Tesla won't be the only player there, but Tesla will have the bot that has the best manufacturing use case. There is no doubt in my mind and they know how to build it. You, you can be sure that the, 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 build of the bot from Tesla is a completely other quality than any of the other players who have no manufacturing experience, who just fall back on what they find. And, and that's that's such an excellent point, because that's that's how I view the company. They are a they are a manufacturing expert that brings cutting edge technology to the masses through scale and making it affordable so people can actually oh. afford it. It's not like reserved. Yeah. So like if, if I use Waymo as an example, Waymo is a company that has achieved a tremendous feat, truly. Like Waymo deserves a lot of credit. They figured yeah. out how to get a bunch of sensors together to put it in a car and map the city so that it doesn't kill people and it gets you from point A to point B. Like that's nuts. And like like legitimately, that's incredibly impressive. But the problem is for, for that to actually be a viable long-term solution, it has to be profitable and it has to be affordable and it has to be scalable. And those three things with the current way that, that if you approach it with that self-driving approach, you're just not gonna get there because you have way too many sensors. It's way too cumbersome to map a city. So as soon as something changes, you're screwed. It costs $250,000 to do, right? So the, and the scale isn't there. So that's where Tesla comes in. They are masters at figuring out how to make that thing work in a way that they can make money and that people can actually afford and they can sell in yep. the millions of units of. That is Tesla's core expertise. Because, because that is what Elon writes them into the book from the get go. When you yes. listen to Lars, you know, the, the instructions he had when he started with the, the Cybertruck, all those videos, that was actually a great product launch. I found we had so many informative videos on different players in, in, in the Tesla good. group. Very well done. But you understood how, how Elon was there, you know, giving them the toughest instruction. Do this, do this in 180 days. Oh, you're still chit-chatting, now do it in 90 days, right? I mean, this is better parenting that I've ever seen. So the 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 I I really do believe that that is uh, Tesla's biggest strength. But let me get a question to you. So yeah. We have this fabulous now version 12 and, and, you know, at one point it will be solved. Um, will others license from Tesla or will they rather license expensive and less, less obvious Waymo just because they don't want a license from Tesla because they can't stomach it? I, I think it would be in a world where Tesla has a self-driving suite that can run on hardware that's no more than $2,000 and is a and you can fit all the hardware in a box why would anyone go with anything else yeah right? that was so, my theory all the time but but i mean i i obviously fought back out right i mean i, I do believe oh, i'm losing you there Ford won the, you at least laggy. from oh sorry um, can you repeat the so last said, five seconds yeah. Sure. So uh, my my theory is that Ford was the OEM that in Q2 earnings call last year, um, Elon mentioned that we were in early talks with an OEM on, on licensing FSD. Um, and obviously F uh, Ford announced now they're going by themselves again. Probably nowhere yeah. but, the, but that. So I, I'm really just wondering, you know, who will be the most intelligent first one who, who finally does it? Because th they should do it now. Because, you know, these OEMs, it takes three years until they have a car on the street with any a new cup holder, right? So anything yeah. takes I have three a theory. Years. I have a theory. Oh. So in the same way that the supercharger network wasn't adopted by legacy automakers until way after they should have, uh, which proves that they're slow. <laughs> they're slow, right? FSC is going to be the same exact thing. So I think what's going to happen is Tesla is going to have a fleet of cars that will be driving themselves that are low cost, high scale, and everyone's going to be looking around and they're going to be like, okay, am I going to try to make my own, which is incredibly difficult and extremely costly, and you need a maniacal leader and a certain culture to be able to do that. And then am I going to buy ultra expensive training hardware where NVIDIA basically dictates the price because everybody else is tripping over themselves to get it, 
right? I mean, so that's option number one, okay? So am I gonna build it myself? Option two is, am I going to leverage a different provider that's gonna be offering a product that's eight to 10 times more expensive or more than what Tesla's offering? Or number three, am I just gonna suck it up <laughs> and go with the low cost provider? Because ultimately, if I don't do that, I'm gonna get run out of business. Yeah. Yeah, and the suck it up Doesn't question it seem pretty is the real one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And suck I mean, it up I, takes time. I, I agree. I agree. And and I I mean I I still hope they suck it, suck it up quicker than you know sooner than later. Uh, especially the Germans. You know, me being German, I obviously look at the German market yeah. very closely. That they are having the Chinese entering the market so much quicker. BYD just uh, delivered another three thousand cars into Germany. They're going to build a, a factory in in Hungary. BYD is not the leader in China for self self driving, but they're working on it. They've had for six months now their license for full self driving yeah. there, and I still believe there is a political issue with Chinese full self driving driving in Europe and in America. The same way it will be for European and American cars driving full self driving in China. I think there's this is becoming it's going to become a real political subject. Can I ask you a question though? But BYD, they're working on level three. They're not working on level five, are they? No, no, no. Level three, and even level right. three. The the, the BYD uh, CEO was was saying for a couple of times now, he's very dubitative. He's very dubitative. People want to use it. I mean, can you right. imagine? And uh, and then he's very dubitative that this will ever work. And then you know, so right. so he's doing it because it's a trend. But you you feel the hesitation in his voice. Right. So so even then, I I feel like. I feel like it's if you're going to have that attitude, you're not going to get level four, level. No, four. <laughs> no, no, you have to want it. You yeah. really need to want yeah. it. You're yeah. really going to want to want it. Right. So I, so then from that perspective, even with the company that does does do scale, which is BYD, they're not even like imagine the moat you're going to have if you are able to produce low cost self-driving cars. Right. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you don't even have confidence that you can do that to me says that you're just doing this. Like you said, you're just doing this because it's a trend. Right. It's mm -hmm. it's it's advanced cruise control. It's something that's just going to make people it's going to it's going to. But but listen, like a level three system has value. And that's that's where I, where I think it's very interesting, because Tesla, and you've mentioned this before, it's brilliant of the company to have a level four system or a near level four system that's actually level two. Because yeah. you you're not held to the same regulatory standards, and you're still putting the onus on the driver to ensure Genius. that the system performs well, and that's why it has such high safety ratings. It's because it's a superhuman driver that's driving it because you have a human and a machine together, right? Yeah. And you're yeah. and all the while you're training the system, right? But that level three system where people are going to be like, okay, if I turn this on, I can just not pay attention, you know? Mm -hmm. Then and then the car will tell me when to pay attention. How many people would love to just take their phone and just go like this for the whole commute? You know what I'm saying? There's a price to that. Someone's, yeah. it's, I don't know if it's 50 bucks a month, 100 bucks a month. I don't know what it is. But so so Tesla's well positioned to take that and maybe BYD if they figure it out. Uh, I don't know at what cost, but maybe they'll figure it out. But then Tesla's going beyond that. Tesla's going level mm. four and five with the same exact exact hardware suite. So in a world where nobody else is doing that, and they are the only system that can offer that, then to me, it just seems like a, it seems like a monopoly to me. It seems, well, it it's seems similar. a monopoly in, yeah. in Western markets. In Western markets, I agree with sure. you. Sure. Let me, let me address a little bit China. So in, in, uh, in China at the moment, car ownership is 15%, one five, okay? 85% mm. of potential clients don't have a car yet, any car. And they, there are lots of entry-level cars that are seeked, whatever, but it's still a huge growth market. We're, we're talking about a market that's enormous, the biggest growth market in the world. Sure. Um, the Chinese government is helping EVs enormously because for any ice you purchase, you have a penalty that's about as much as the price of the car. Okay, So you double the price of a, of a, a non-EV car. That's why EVs and, and plug-in hybrids are so much, you know, the infrastructure isn't perfect yet. It's a huge country like the United yeah. States. You have zones where it's not not as as well. But uh, but Tesla has done an enormous job. Without Tesla, there would be no EV in China. And and I think the the Chinese government, uh, as much as I despise them for a lot of other reasons, um, has acknowledged and I think will acknowledge in the future that Tesla has a space in China. But at the same time, you have. Uh, Xiaoping, you have uh, Li Odo, you have a couple of others 
who are really coming from the software side. You, you have Huawei now as well, who is doing into cars. So you have a segment of the Chinese car market. I mean, first of all, you have enormous demand. You have a very software um, appreciative clientele. Because they're they're coming to cars the same way they're coming to software uh, to, to 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 smartphones, they you know they didn't start with the little landline like we did and then slowly moved up via the BlackBerry to finally have our our smartphones. Their first car will be the smartest car that was there, so they're they're understanding the software part of cars much better than Europeans or Americans. I mean wherever else in the world. So, so the Chinese market is very particular. And I do believe it will actually be the first one where FSD will get to a level five. And it probably mm. won't be Tesla because it's those small companies that some of them are actually government owned will have the privilege to have initially uh, licenses just because they're Chinese, just because they're in the good books of the, of the, the, the government there. With what kind of hardware? Well, that's it, and and that's the the issue. I mean, they have they're having they're having self driving cars now, and they're quite impressive, at least on videos. You never know how teleguided it is or how it is, but you have a uh, Xiaoping has now um, cars that resemble on the screen on on at least version eleven here. Uh, but the but the the thing is that Chinese car buyers are much less sensitive to safety than we are. When BYD buy, uh, s- sells the, a car in China, the same name car in Europe is completely constructed differently because it would never get a safety rating that's acceptable to Europeans. So they're building the same car twice, once for the Chinese market in a torn down, unsafe manner, and once for the European market. It, this actually became became obvious. Uh, I think it was GM, GM from a British brand that was purchased by the, the Chinese uh, when they exported to Australia. And they, I don't know by what mistake they they exported the Chinese model to, to Australia. And then they had all the safety tests there. It was an absolute catastrophe. They had one star or even less. So the, the, the whole thing is that the the notion of car safety is a completely different one, both for hardware both for the car itself and for hardware and for FSD there in China. So we just have to keep that in mind when we when we compare those markets. And that's why I still think, you know, that there will be a Western FSD, and I hope it's Tesla, and I think it's Tesla because I see nobody else even coming close, even though, you know, Mercedes is doing some stupid stuff and BMW is doing some stupid stuff, but it's mm-hmm. just not comparable. Um, and there will be a Chinese market. That, that, that could be a part. That's fair. I think that's that's a fair thing to say. But but I think the but again, that's another data point that says if if you are thinking that Tesla will not be successful because of competition, that's I don't think that's a correct statement because to think that Agreed. to think that the Chinese automakers are just going to be everywhere when Tesla exists, that 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 doesn't make sense. It's probably going to be and I've used this analogy before, it's going to be much closer akin to Apple and Samsung and, you know, Apple versus Android. You're going to have two dominant players and then a second tier that's fighting for the rest of the TAM and then everybody else. And the auto segment looks exactly the same. Looks like Tesla BYD. Then you, you, you put in uh, a XPeng and the other players, Lee auto and all the other guys in the second tier, and then it's everybody else. Right. And then you have different dynamics in different markets. Exactly. And that's why I always tell people, look at the story, what happened to Huawei, uh, you know, the Chinese provider when they tried to conquer the West, I think the same will happen with FSD Chinese of Chinese uh, origin. Exactly the yeah, same. For sure. F- fascinating time. Okay, and so let me let me ask you this. I was I'm meaning to ask you this before. When will Wall Street see this? Uh, actually, and why are we so confident theory, that this is going to happen? My theory, which is <laughs> completely completely torn by my by my hair, but is you know they recruited a quite extraordinary advertising team. Right, we saw those ads. We know they're in Santa Monica with uh, with Lars and um, and Franz in in that office, um, mm-hmm. and uh, they're obviously working because people saw them at charging stations and all that. I think there's a huge ad campaign coming, but it will come when Vidus is not better anymore. I think they have thought through what is the key moment where they want this advertising to be as effective as possible? Not just say, look, this is the Model 3 now at 33,000, but look, this is the car of the future. 
it looks like the future, it drives like the future, it is the future. And, mm. uh, and that's the moment when advertising finally comes and Wall Street <laughs> yeah. will see it. Okay, so you think it's the, so the campaign will be, not only can you buy a Model 3 for uh, less than a Camry, let's say, yeah. it will also drive you. Exactly. Buy I think now it will be for, altogether. you know. Yeah. Okay. I think it will be, you know, when he said yesterday, when Elon said yesterday, uh, it will be the most fabulous product launch ever for the Roadster. Of course it will be. But I think for the mass market product, they want to give us something finished. And finished mean FSD is not better. I agree with that. I agree. I, I think that's a fantastic point. I think that's such a great point. The tolerance that people have, I think, when, when it comes to the mass market, they, they are by default, they're not going to have nearly as much tolerance as let's say if, if the, they, they release the compact car or V12 in the same way they released the Model S or the Model yeah. X or even the Model yeah. 3. It's it's not going to be pretty because those folks have not because they have their super hard earned dollar. They don't have that much time. This is going to be probably one of the biggest purchases they'll ever make. Right. Yeah. And th there is very low tolerance before for being upset. Yeah, that's, exactly. That's or, or to wait. You know, the, ma the mass yeah. market doesn't want to wait. Remember when 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 Apple launches a phone, the next day it's there. So yeah. th th there has to be this. It's ready. And that's how I think they're going to do the compact car. I think the compact mm. car, there's going to be no unveil. It's just going to be magically one day. Elon's going to go on X. Oh, by the way, uh, order your compact car on the Tesla website. Deliveries begin in a month. Yeah. And I think the Model Y high, uh, um, upgrade. Um, Refresh as well. Oh yeah, for sure. Chuck. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Just like that. Uh, they must I always be get so, so upset when I talk you know, to with you. Us, with us. <laughs> <laughs> they, they must be so upset with us, you know, watching everything, drone droning over the parking. I mean, we, we know everything a couple of weeks early, right? <laughs> well, it's it's fun. Anything. Yeah, it it's is. so fun. I, I do know. think though with, with the FSD question, and then uh, we'll do a couple more minutes and then Q&A. You okay with time? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think the FSD question, you know, if, if I, if I'm, if I want to talk about like maybe the stock a little bit, not financial advice, obviously none of this is financial advice, uh, or investment advice, but the, I really do wonder if wall street will finally wake up to the prospect of FSD once they start seeing recurring revenue from the software broken out in a different line in the P and L. And well, I mean, seeing, come on, they, they don't even see the energy yet, and yet the numbers are there. You know, it, sometimes it's just like, what, what, what? So you really think these folks are just not paying attention to the details? You, you I think really they're think tired. That's the case. I think they're tired of Tesla. I think they're so tired of it. And and okay. again, you know, the, I can the, understand that. <laughs> the current the, exactly the current flying duck is Nvidia, so they're now all onto Nvidia, and and then you know whatever. Meta doubled the last the last nine months, so so they have stock that excites them more, and uh, mm -hmm. they're you know first of all the car sector is usually not an exciting sector. It was an exciting sector because Tesla was so disruptive, but that's sort of torn off now. So they need something new to get excited, and they also get need to get del delusion, and I think they will uh, from from Nvidia and all. All those others at the moment it's all sunshine there but doesn't that by default make wall street emotional oh they are they're all divas all of them i'm not naming names <laughs> but we're all thinking of the same yeah okay and that I'm that's not. the one thing that i've yeah, <laughs> that's the one thing that you know and again i i'm making a broad statement i don't want to single single anybody out but i think that's the one reconciliation I've had to do as I've the more I've learned about how I think about this story is that and this is going to sound maybe egotistical or whatever but maybe as a as a retail investor I have an advantage because by default it's it's I have to be non-emotional for, for me oh, to be successful no you have two advantages you have the advantage of your emotions and, uh, you know, getting over them, thinking it through, whatever. And the second is time is the ultimate currency. Wall Street doesn't have time. Wall Street ticks mm. by the second, by the minute, by the hour, by the day, so by the month, by the quarter. You have time. You, if, if eventually you want to sell the, the stock, you can, you could potentially tell yourself, 
I'm selling at 500 and you could sit it out. It wouldn't matter to you how long it takes to get to 500. They don't have that leisure, right? Mm -hmm. So don't worry. You have two advantages and probably three. Yeah. Third one is up there. <laughs> Thank you. I think the, the, okay. So Wall Street is a short-term emotional mess. There you go. It is. We're done. It is. Okay. It Thank is. you for stopping in, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> we made friends. We made friends. We figured today. it out. We figured it out. <laughs> All right, let's do some questions. Uh, drop a question in your in your comment section below. Yeah. Write question before your question so it's easy for me to see it and single it out. We're doing Q&A on both X and YouTube, Alexandra, because X is hooked up to StreamYard so we can bring up questions from both sides. Isn't this amazing? I'm going. I have no idea where they wow. come from. I keep on going. <laughs> Here we go. All right, so let's go ahead. Um, Okay, so this one's an interesting comment because this is like kind of goes along with what we said. We're all waiting for promises to materialize. And what's what's interesting here is that, you know, that's one of the things that I that I hear from the other side sometimes. It's like, hey, this is all talk, right? This is all talk. They're talking about these ambitious plans, their promises. Mm -hmm. They haven't come to fruition. Elon has been super <laughs> over positive about FSD and all these mm -hmm. things, and we're still waiting, right? And there is so Tell me, like, like, why are you so confident it's going to happen? So, like, what's well, how do you conceptualize yeah. that? For, first of all, uh, that's true. I mean, time is our asset as an investor, but time is difficult when you are following Elon because it's just he's merely late. Um, so, what gives me comfort is the progress of the bot a lot. What gives me comfort is uh, the sandbagging on Dojo. Uh, I've done a whole thread of every statement he's made on Dojo. And if you put those breadcrumbs together, we're going somewhere. Not sure this is going to be it, but for sure, uh, there, there is something there. Um, and then on the cause, and then on energy, read the balance sheets and you know what's coming. It's huge what's coming on energy. It's just a matter how quick it comes because, you know, it's those installment payments. When Whenever those mega packs get, put to the grid, that's when final payment happens and that's where you will see it. So um, it, it's not just hot promises and there's stuff that's really in the pipelines, but some of it are hot uh, hot uh, promises and you have to do your homework to see whether you can believe it or not. It, I can't tell you it's for sure there. It's at the moment at the state where I believe it because, you know, the guy that made rockets land, I was at Kennedy Space Center last week, um, it, it these astronauts, you know, they there are so few of them. The respect they have for Elon because he did what nobody thought was possible and he's doing the same for Tesla. So, yes, there is a part of me that is a true believer and maybe these promises won't come, come through, but there's also a part that sits in her car for five minutes and thinks, why are you even doubting? Because this is such a machine. This, I mean, anybody who hasn't sit in a Tesla, please take a demo drive, it, it, especially in the Model 3, the new Model 3. This car is a $35,000 car that is better than any Porsche that's out there, that's any Mercedes that's out there, than anything else that's out there. So then you see that it's not just hot promises. Yeah. And 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 if we look at, you know, previous execution is, and I say this a lot on the channel, but uh, 500,000 EVs per year by 2020, uh, a profitable electric vehicle, reusable rockets that seem extremely normal now. Uh, these seem pretty hard <laughs> yeah, exactly. and they figured it out. So I don't know. Okay. Here's the next question. Thank you for your question, Earl. Okay. Hi, here's Earl. another question. <laughs> uh, how's producer mom? Producer mom is doing fantastic. Uh, she is her uh, seven, seven months in and uh, we're very excited to meet our little boy come May. Thank you so much for Happy asking. birthday, Cindy. Yeah. It was yesterday. Yes. Happy birthday to my lovely wife. Oh, by the way, if you're in the Austin area, uh, uh, um, uh, kanji on uh, in Austin downtown, some of the best food I've had in the city. Shout out, there kanji. you go. Good, so for good. You. Did they give you Tony, a free meal for doing that? <laughs> uh, next time I come, just remember this. <laughs> Let's do that. Uh, I'll bring well, the you know, by the way, by the way, before we get to the question, there's a, so yeah. a solar eclipse soon, right? That you see that you will see oh, yeah. in Austin, April 8th. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm excited. I think so. I'm excited. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, all right, Tony, thank you so much. Long time listener, supporter. Appreciate you, brother. Do you think Tesla should pursue regulatory approval for and monetization of FSD on highways separately from FSD on city streets? How do you think about this? Oh, well, I didn't even ever consider splitting it up. Hmm, that's an interesting thought. I actually, you know, when people tell me 
bureaucracy is going to get into their way. Yeah, the Biden administration is going to get into their way. There's no doubt about it. I hope they're leaving soon. But um, Nashta, I found are actually quite favorable to Tesla. I mean, I know we still have these stupid recalls on paper and whatever, but remember when at that stupid Super Bowl ad came through with the, our clown uh, clown out and they immediately did him a cease and desist, right? Immediately. Yeah. Um, I mean, this is a guy that was running for governor in, in California, so you would think he is protected, uh, right? And and he was not. So that gave me some comfort. And and the same is always, you know, when I when I see Elon fighting with Biden, they need him. They need SpaceX. They need Starlink. Uh, so he has he has the longer arm here. There is no doubt in my in my mind. I do believe, believe they will get regulatory approval. I mean, it's going to be state by state, right? This is, you know, America is complicated. The DMVs are state level. So, and you will need to get the dash on, you will need to get DMVs on, and then you will need federal law for insurance because they will have to hash out who is in the end reliable, liable for all this. So there are, you know, a couple of levels that have to go through. I'm not sure it needs to be split between um, highways and, and city streets. No, I don't know. I haven't thought this through. If I think it's through, Tony, I get back to you. I think that's an interesting question. And I think in a traditional automaker, I think this would be like one of those obvious things to do from a monetization perspective because the highway problem is a lot easier than the city problem. But knowing how the comp company works and the culture, I don't think Elon would ever allow that to happen mm -hmm. because that means that they are, well, look, we're making money from FSD. And then that's mm -hmm. just going to lower the pressure. It's going to lower the pressure to get it I done. I agree with you. So, yeah. Yeah. So I think by design, they're not going to release it until you can drive anywhere. And then, you know, then then Elon's going to because imagine if Elon comes out, comes out and says, hey, you can finally not pay attention, but only on the highways. That mm. kind of like sounds very legacy automaker ish to me. Yeah, it doesn't exactly. sound like Tesla, which is like, just put it on and don't worry. And yeah. it doesn't matter. You can go from your house to your friend's house an hour away. You don't have yeah. to worry. That speaks to me a lot closer than. The other one, but that's a great question, Tony. Thank you. Uh, what would precipitate a stock split? Oh, we'll have to be in the 600, 700s again. Okay. Uh, Alex, will Tesla be able to double their compute every quarter like they were forecasting? How are you thinking well, about that? That's a very good question. question. And and I, I really hope they will update us soon because that would mean that Dojo is going the way that I want them, them to. Um, one thing I do for all those people that think I don't do my homework, uh, is I'm doing at least once a week a full scan of their uh, career site. And I always check how many jobs there are up there for Dojo, how many have been filled compared to last week, how many new ones are popping up, same for uh, AI, same for um, the bot, same for you know anything, ADS, ADA, AS testing, where they are worldwide with those. I think that's a very, very good way. I mean... This poor company, we're scrutinizing them from all sides, right? The ones go with the drones, I go into the jobs. I mean, it's it's crazy. It's a good thing. But it is, of course. Uh, yeah. And so, um, but the one information we don't have yet is will the compute double? From what I see on the career sites on how much they recruit, I do believe Dojo is well and alive. Thank you. I, I agree. Okay, let's do that. This one's a fascinating question. How does Tesla fare if Trump wins presidency? Oh, better. Better. I agree. I tell you one thing. First of all, uh, Elon was never a friend of these IRA credits, right? I mean, the, the, he just said, you know, Tesla doesn't need them. It's it's great that, you know, other companies do them and they produce batteries here in the United States. All good. Um, but if the IRA became uh, under pressure, um, Tesla, I mean, of course, it would be nice to have more, more subsidies, but it wouldn't matter if they have less. The other thing you have to understand here in the United States... A president is only powerful for the two years he has the presidency, the Senate, and the House. So if Trump becomes president, first of all, we have to see whether he also has the Senate and the House. If he has all three, he has two years of that. Then usually it changes because, you know, that's just the way it goes in the United States. Every two years, the House changes because people are upset with whatever they have. And then that's it. That's the end of any any progress. So he has a short two years. What he wants to do in those two years, he's focused on immigration. He's focused on putting a 60% tariff on Chinese cars. Goodbye, BYD on American streets then. Uh, so there, there are a lot of other things he wants to do. I think going after EV and reducing EV is a lot of talk during the campaign because he wants those Michigan voters and he wants that, you know, the, those red states being all aligned. 
he knows he has no chance in California and New York anyway, so he can trash this because that's not his his uh, clientele. Uh, but I don't think there will be any consequence. But the economy as itself will be better. The stock market will go up. He will put much more pressure on Jerome Powell to put interest rates down. And the uh, and for that, uh, those are all the reasons for which Tesla itself would execute much higher, much better. I mean, I'm not a, a Trump voter. I'm not voting this year yet. I don't, don't think yeah. I'll have I mean, I'm my, my citizenship lagging in and out. by then. Uh, but I really hope uh -oh. it's the end of the bond trade. Okay. You were just lagging a bunch. Do I have you back? Hello? Are you back? Okay, Sorry. You're back? Okay. I'm back. I, yeah. Did yeah, you hear I, that I didn't want the Biden yeah. administration to stay? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I heard that part. But you're not necessarily voting for Trump either, is the is, is what I'm hearing. No, I'm not voting at all. Yeah. I, I don't have my citizenship yet. <laughs> yeah, okay. Lucky you. I have to vote, and I don't think I'm voting for either either. But that's that's how oh, I'm thinking yeah. about it. Anyway, it's such a mess. But I, I do I do agree with you. I do think I think Trump Trump's rhetoric is very different from his actions. If you look at his presidency uh, from 20 uh, when he was running in 2016, he was saying a lot of things, and some of the things he did aligned with what he was saying. But then, if you really ultimately, I think he's much more pro business than Biden is. Biden exactly. is a lot more pro union, and by default, when you have an economic juggernaut like Tesla, and that's it's it's a fact that Tesla is an economic juggernaut. The, the last yeah. thing you want to do is just hamper any economic progress in the country, because I think his ultimate thing is more business, better country. Yeah, so, he's he's fully yeah. he's fully transactional this is the the yes. most transactional person i've ever witnessed and uh, and he needs elon i actually think they already have a transaction in place yeah okay uh you're you're lagging a lot i'm wondering what's going on are, are you still there hello i'm sorry yeah okay it's, it's, okay. it's on and off right yeah, yeah i'm here yeah okay we'll do I'm we'll here. do a couple more let's see um I'm here. okay good Da, 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 da. When do you think the bot is going to be sold in the millions of units per year? Millions of units, oh, 2028. Okay. Do you, and do you think it's factory first or do you yeah. think it's public first? 2028, yeah. Oh, factory. Yeah. Factory. So getting the cogs down and then uh, once you prove it out in the factories, then you get it out to the public. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's do one more. There's a lot of delay, Alexandra. So I don't know what's going on with the internet. So let's do one more and hopefully we can get this yeah. one through. I don't know. I'm yeah. sorry. It's mm. okay. No problem at all. Um, let's do this one. Uh, is something going to break in legacy auto? There are people panicking on YouTube about the car market being terrible. Have you seen any of that from your end? No, not yet. I, I was actually surprised it didn't break uh, earlier. I, I had expected that, you know, once the, the COVID bump was over, that they would suffer much more, but they had a quite good 2023. So I think it's overdue to break, but uh, I haven't seen any proof of that yet. Yeah. The way I think about this one is at some point, buying a car, a gas car that is more expensive and worse than a competing electric vehicle will break, like something will break. But it's one of those things where, you know, uh, weeks take take years and then years take weeks. You know that saying where like a long time, nothing happens and then all of a sudden everything happens suddenly. By nature, the auto industry and legacy automakers are set up for that because they're so slow to change that once the disruption comes, especially with the advent of a compact car and an affordable electric vehicle that's that's very cheap to make, which is going to offer better handling, driving dynamics, safety, software, self-driving technology. Unless you have a car out there that does that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're right. It doesn't matter you're if right. it's EV or not. You know what I'm saying? It's just better at that point. So, okay. All right, we'll end it right there. Alexandra, thank you so much for coming on. This was a fantastic, I had so much fun. Uh, fantastic Definitely. discussion. I'm always so fired up after we're always, uh, we're, we're done talking because it's like, I feel like we just converse so well. So thank you so much for coming yeah, on. Really you. appreciate you. Thank you. Mwah, obviously, thank you so much. All right, everybody. Bye -bye. Thank you for stopping in. Make sure you go check her out. Tesla Boomer Mama on X, Tesla Boomer Mama, Alexandra Mertz on YouTube. Go check her out. Bye-bye, everybody.